Good day, Corporators. Thank you for sharing your time and talent with our parish communities. This presentation is designed to give you some helpful information related to human resources. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions regarding this presentation, please contact me, Molly Fern, Training Manager, either by calling me, 410-547-5338, or sending me an email. My email address is mfern at archbalt.org. That's all lowercase, m-f-e-r-n at a-r-c-h-b-a-l-t dot o-r-g. Thank you. I hope you find this presentation informative. The Human Resources Team and you, as parish corporators, share a common goal to prevent civil legal problems in our parishes. As corporators, you are the watchdogs that ask questions and alert others when risk becomes evident. Thank you for your willingness to provide oversight and to ensure that our parish communities are compliant with both civil law and church teaching. Human Resources provides policies and procedures to help our parishes stay out of hot water. For example, applicants for employment must be thoroughly screened and assessed prior to hire. An application must be completed, fingerprinting must be done for both the state and FBI criminal background check, child protection training must be completed, and three professional references must be checked. These procedures ensure parishes avoid hiring an unqualified or unsuitable applicant. Parishes are individual employers and therefore must follow state and federal employment laws. Employees are protected by laws such as the Fair Labor Standards Act to ensure they're paid properly and given fair treatment in their workplace. The Archdiocese also ensures fair treatment of parish employees by implementing employment practices such as having all parishes abide by the Family Medical Leave Act, regardless of whether the parish has 15 employees or fewer. If we abided by the letter of that law, we would require only parishes employing 15 or more people to comply with the Family Medical Leave Act. All employees and volunteers are required to take an online training course to obtain a basic understanding of the signs of child abuse how we can prevent child abuse, and how to properly report child abuse. Volunteers are also screened to ensure that they too are able to perform their roles and will not present any undue risk to the parish. Volunteers must complete an application, have three references checked, and complete a state criminal history check along with completing child protection training. If a volunteer is acting in a regular employee role, that volunteer may have to follow the hiring procedures for employment rather than for volunteer service. For example, if a volunteer is leading the children's ministry, he or she would need to be fingerprinted to check his or her state and FBI criminal history. A parish certainly wouldn't want to risk engaging a volunteer who was convicted of child abuse to lead the children's ministry. As corporators, you can ask questions to ensure that practices and procedures for hiring and supervising employees and volunteers are fair, legal, and in compliance with archdiocesan policies. As Archbishop Lori has stated in our Archdiocesan Pastoral Plan Prayer, may we never lose sight of our sacred mission to go and make disciples of all nations. Employees play a vital role in accomplishing our mission and therefore should be knowledgeable, skilled, and able to support our mission. When seeking an employee, parishes are welcome to get job descriptions, interview questions, and reference checking assistance from the Human Resources Team. Asking all applicants the same set of questions ensures a thorough and fair assessment 
and eliminates the possibility of asking discriminatory questions such as, are you married or are you disabled? Those types of questions could result in a discrimination charge. Human resources can also provide information about locations for fingerprinting and information related to obtaining an applicant's state and FBI criminal history. The Human Resources team is here to support each parish, so please don't hesitate to request their service. As you interact with employees and volunteers, you'll get to know which folks seem to be most competent in their roles. Human Resources is always ready to support parishes by providing training resources and guidance on supervision. We have two employee relations managers, Regina McCurdy and Connie Vagran, who stand ready to help parish employees reach their full potential. Regina and Connie can assist with goal setting, performance evaluation, documentation of employee performance, and, if necessary, discipline and termination. Our parish leaders manage a complicated operation, and Human Resources wants to support their efforts, whether it's writing a job description or documenting unbecoming conduct, Human Resources is here to help. Parishes need to be aware of the Fair Labor Standards Act, or FLSA as we HR folks like to call it. The FLSA classifies jobs into two categories, exempt and non-exempt. Exempt employees are exempt from overtime pay. Non-exempt employees are not exempt from overtime pay. When filling positions, it is important to classify each position correctly since non-exempt employees must be paid for all time worked and are eligible for overtime pay if work hours exceed 40 in a week. Human resources can assist with classifying positions exempt or non-exempt. FLSA also prohibits delayed pay, so even if an employee has left with no notice, for example, the employee left in the middle of his or her shift, that employee is still due pay for the hours he or she worked. Pay deductions for taxes and FICA are required by law. Deductions for purposes such as retirement savings must be authorized by the employee. If a parish has questions or concerns regarding pay, the Human Resources Management System team can help. The HRMS team includes payroll specialists who can often resolve problems right over the phone. When employing minors, parishes have to pay attention to the number of hours worked each day. Minors must be 14 or older to work and must have a work permit on file with their employer signed by a parent or guardian. A minor aged 14 or 15 can only work up to four hours on any school day. A minor aged 16 or 17 can spend only 12 hours in both school and work combined each day. There are several jobs which minors are prohibited from working, such as meat cutting and mining work. Parishes can get a wealth of information about employing minors from the Department of Labor Licensing and Regulation. The website address is www.dlr.state.md.us. Human Resources is also happy to answer any questions related to the employment of minors. The church is all inclusive. We are all God's children. And the same rule applies when employing church workers. We don't want to discriminate against any protected class when considering applicants or working with our current employees. The law prohibits making employment decisions or engaging in unfair treatment of any employee because of his or her race, color, gender, pregnancy, sexual orientation, 
gender identity, marital status, or genetic information. The list of protected classes continues on our next slide. Employers also cannot discriminate in hiring or treatment of any current employee due to his or her age. This refers to folks age 40 and over, ancestry, national origin, or disability. Because we are a church organization, we can seek Catholics for our positions and require that an applicant be a practicing Catholic for positions in which it is a bona fide occupational qualification. For example, a director of religious education would need to be a practicing Catholic in order to model the faith and act as a minister in the church. Therefore, being Catholic is a bona fide occupational qualification for a director of religious education. Parishes want to be careful to not classify employees as independent contractors. Most church positions require employment rather than a contractual agreement since there's usually a need to have control over the work being performed. If an employee is treated like an independent contractor and no taxes are withheld, it could lead to huge tax penalties for both the employee and the parish. Classifying employees as exempt to avoid paying overtime hours can also lead to huge penalties and back pay awards. If a parish wishes to employ an independent contractor, human resources can assist in negotiating that arrangement. In most cases, parishes are employing non-exempt employees who follow the employer's directions for work hours, the type of work to perform, and how to prioritize that work. We certainly can all agree that abuse should never happen in our parishes. To prevent abusers getting access to our communities, screening is required. Applications must be completed, three references must be checked, and a criminal background check is completed during the Child Protection Online training. All these procedures are in place to prevent abuse. If abuse does occur or is even suspected, it is against the law not to report those facts or concerns to civil authorities, such as the police or Child Protective Services. The Archdiocese also requires abuse or suspected abuse be reported to the Office of Child and Youth Protection. All employees and volunteers are required to read the Statement of Policy for the Protection of Children and Youth and the Code of Conduct for Church Personnel. As corporators, you must familiarize yourself with these documents and ensure that the parish has them available for employees and volunteers to review. These documents detail expected standards of conduct. We cannot hold employees and volunteers accountable for conduct they are unaware of, so the review of these documents is vital. Human Resources recommends annual review of these documents by all staff and volunteers. Volunteers hold key roles in our parishes and therefore must be held to high standards. Child protection training, referred to as stand training, is required for all volunteers, even those who don't have substantial contact with children. Volunteer misconduct, like employee misconduct, 
must be addressed in a timely manner. Human resources can also assist parishes dealing with volunteer misconduct or performance issues. The human resources team assigned to support parishes and schools is listed on the screen. My contact information has already been given to you, so I didn't include my information on the slide. Thank you for your time and dedication to the mission of our parishes. Thank you for being staunch defenders of the faith.